Hey there guys, today I'm going to be showing you how you can raise the level of gaming performance in pretty much any AMD laptop. Now it won't work with every system, but the vast majority of them out there should allow you to do these changes so that you can actually boost your overall gaming performance. What you're going to want to do is go on to the GitHub for the AMD APU Tuning Utility, which is a wonderful program that makes it extremely easy to actually modify your APU to get more performance. It's now called the Universal X86 Tuning Utility, and it's had quite a few features added onto it since the original release of the AMD APU Tuning Utility. Once you extract the folder, you go into it and you'll see here that there are a bunch of different files. The only thing that you really need to worry about is the exe file called universal tuning utility you have to right click on it and run it as administrator this is extremely important as it is what allows the program to actually work so always remember to do that now once you've launched it you're going to be greeted with this welcome screen and it says the old name of the program you just go down to this next option and this is the page that matters the most now the next one underneath here is the one where if you're the kind of person that wants to manually tweak your settings this is what you look at if you want to make your own performance pre sets with very specific TDPs, this is where you go. There are in general more pages here where you can tweak a lot of the performance settings, but for the vast majority of you, you are better off just using the presets. But the program actually does work with a wide variety of different GPUs. Now, if we go down here to this magnifying glass, you'll see this is actually a built-in FSR injector called Magpie. Now you need to go into the settings and manually enable it and if you don't have very specific things installed it will require you to install these .NET features but the program itself will take you to pretty much all of the different things that you need to download to get this to work. Now I'll be taking a look at this specific feature in its own video I'm going to be comparing it to other FSR injectors but the option is there for you to use this to potentially boost the performance in games. I'm a little skeptical on that but I'll go into detail in another video but as I said the page that's going to matter to you the most is the one with the presets these will work for the vast majority of people now battery saver pretty much sets the tdp or the amount of power that the chip is allowed to use to 8 watts by default it is 15 so it's pretty much half of the wattage now this will be a reduction in your gaming performance but your battery life will be extended and it's actually a nice feature to enable if you're going to be out for a long time and you're worried about the battery life of your laptop you can always enable that and it won't allow the chip to ever use more than eight watts it will of course slow things down but for the vast majority of tasks that you're doing it's really not going to matter balanced goes with a target tdp of 22 watts sustain while the performance mode will end up going for all the way up to 28 watts and this should give you a nice boost in performance in pretty much any game out there but we can actually see it in action here. We actually have Left 4 Dead 2 running with just the stock TDP setting, which is 15 watts sustained. Certainly, it's not a bad gaming experience at all, but we aren't utilizing the full potential of the chip here. And by just adjusting the TDP setting, we'll actually be able to get some nicer levels of performance where if we had a high refresh rate monitor, we could potentially actually utilize that in a meaningful way. And now here you can see the balance preset boost our 1% lows to a range where we're now just slightly under 60 and our averages are now over 100 which means that no point will this ever really go below the refresh rate of the actual display of this laptop and if you're playing this with a laptop that has a 144 hertz display or higher than that well you're actually going to be able to utilize that and of course if we take a look at the performance preset you'll he see here that our one percent lows are now more than above 60 fps and we're getting averages very very close to 120. So so we get a very, very nice increase in performance, pretty much about a 20% uplift in comparison to just running at the stock 15 watt TDP. Now, a few things to note here, of course, as you raise the TDP, you are increasing the amount of power that the system is using, which means that the cooling capacity of your system really is going to be what matters the most here. Because as you can see, the temperatures of the gaming experience has increased dramatically, so the system is now making more noise and it is running way hotter. Now, the system itself won't start to throttle until it gets into around 95 degrees, but these temperatures aren't exactly the most ideal for a prolonged gaming experience. 
For the vast majority of people out there who have owned cheap laptops in general, you've probably learned that heat is the killer of budget laptops. So having these high temperatures for sustained amounts of time isn't exactly the most ideal, but it really just depends on the specific laptop model that you have. So you can play around with the settings and see what kind of temperatures you get. In general, I would try to avoid getting any temperatures above 85 degrees. And really, I would recommend to just never game at anything that is in the 90 degrees if you can avoid it. And of course, this feature isn't going to work in general with every single system out there. Unfortunately, the way that modern mobile chips are designed, they really allow the manufacturers to have a lot of control over what you can and can't do on them. So if a manufacturer pretty much chooses to lock away the ability to adjust the TDP, you're pretty much out of luck in that situation. Now, thankfully, the vast majority of manufacturers aren't exactly locking all of this down, but there are ones out there that do. So you should be aware of that. But we'll be taking a look at Magpie that is built into this and compare it to the lossless scaling tool later on to see if injecting FSR is going to be useful in a lot of games on Windows. But anyways, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.